The world of crypto is incredibly interesting and there's a lot of different use cases for this technology. I am neither a crypto bull or a crypto bear. I am simply trying to understand what is the use case of this technology. I think there are various different forms in which blockchains and smart contracts can be reasonable, accessible. They can introduce new forms of digital scar scarcity, NFTs, all that stuff. I'm not fully against it. I am sometimes skeptical of all the people that think this is going to revolutionize and change everything about the world because I feel like they're fishing for trying to find the next revolutionary technology and um, sometimes it's going a little bit too far. Over the weekend, I came across a video, or really last night I came across this video, last night was Monday night, and this video, uh, it caught my eye. So it's a four minute clip, I really want to react to it. If you ever have been thinking about what cryptocurrencies are, why they're relevant, how they can be used in the real world, this video does a really good job explaining how they're kind of useless in real world applications. That doesn't mean crypto is in general is a scam or anything like that. It just means that there are some real world applications where look, they're just they're just not that relevant at the end of the day. And they're, they're actually probably not at all important in the context of real world ways in which you can use the type of technology. Now, the person who's going to, there's a little bit of debate in these four minutes. The person who's asking the questions is more of a crypto skeptic trying to get them to understand crypto. Um, and the other person who's responding is actually one of the biggest crypto investment advisors to a Silicon Valley investment firm uh, that, that primarily focuses on Web3 and crypto technologies. So the person who's answering this is not just some random guy like doing a podcast talking about crypto. He's someone who literally does this for a living. He understands crypto. He understands the world and the investment space, all this stuff. To his credit, you're going to see his answer is really bad. He His argument was he was sleepy. He had some personal family issues. He wasn't really ready. He didn't think he was going to be debating on the podcast, all that stuff. And I give him all of that because I've been in that situation where I'm on a podcast and I just don't perform as well as I was going to. But the problem is when he followed up on Twitter, he didn't really give and I'll give all the at names in a second. He didn't really give an explanation for the response to the question that the person was asking uh, because I don't think there is a response because ultimately, like, it, it, it's not really an easy question to answer because there's not an easy answer because there might not be an answer. So we're going to get into it. It has to do with real estate and using cryptocurrencies and assets on the blockchain in a way that's actually more valuable. So let's get into it right now. Here is the at name. So the person who's actually answering the thing was called Packy M, Packy McCormick. Uh, this is the Logan Bartlett, Bartlett's podcast. It's the Cartoon Avatar, Cartoon Avatars podcast. Logan Bartlett is hosting it with Zach Weinberg and Packy McCormick. I don't know if Zach's actually a, a host on the podcast, but he was on this podcast. I know Logan, I believe Packy are, are, are the hosts theoretically. Or I think so. And um, here is the four minute clip. This is Zach who's questioning Packy on crypto use cases. And through why, you know, this use case would be better as opposed to the technical issues. Those ones don't concern me. Yeah, yeah no. So if we if we reason through why these things can be better, I mean like take for example, no one's done this yet. This is one of those like promised things, but the the real estate transaction that takes three months, needs title, needs all these things that take a long time. You could theoretically make all of these things NFTs. An NFT doesn't it doesn't mean there's gonna be like a house with a picture of a monkey on it, but these things could all be NFTs and you could transact very quickly. You could borrow against them in a global market as opposed to having to go to Bank of America to take out your mortgage. You have a more kind of open system that that people are able to I think transact in more creative ways in. That's like, I put my house on the blockchain and then I can borrow against it. Yeah. You can put your house on the blockchain, borrow against it, which again, like here actually is, you know, like a lot of the use cases are like, well, imagine that you're in a place where, you know, inflation is super high. And so this is okay. But let's, let me just, let's just do that one. Cause that's my favorite one. Uh, I put my house on the blockchain, which doesn't really mean anything. Uh, cause you can't physically put it on the blockchain. Uh, and then somebody lends me whatever. 500,000 USDC or some stable coin. And then I take it and I buy some ridiculous NFT of Logan. It's probably worth 600,000 or something. Yeah, a lot. And then it goes to zero because they actually look at it. And <laughs> now you got to, you need the money, right? Because you, you lent me that $500,000. I just like working this through. Like you lent me the $500,000 because my, my digital house was on the blockchain. And then you say, okay, Zach, that Logan thing was pretty stupid. I need your house. This is the record of your house that I own. And then I say, no. What do you do? You show up to the sheriff's department. And you're like, look at this like piece of cryptography that says I own this house. Like what? I like, guess what I mean. Like, what does that even mean? How do you get the house? I think there's a, two separate things here. What I think you're saying implies that like the law never touches crypto and there's like this whole separate universe same thing that would happen if you took out a mortgage and didn't pay would happen you'd get 
repossessed. Right. Same thing would, would happen here. Because the bank owns like the title to the house and I've signed a bunch of legal documents showing that I've given them that and those legal documents are... Basically what you're saying is we're going to recreate the entire system and just have a public record of it. That's all. That's like, to me, that's exactly what, wherever you walk these three ideas through, it always ends up with like, oh, that's. So the argument he's saying here is like, okay, uh, Packy's point is like, well, if it's done through a smart contract, then if you don't pay for it, the bank will just repossess the house. This would happen in the real world. And so Zach's argument is like, but that already happens in the real world. So like, what is the competitive advantage of doing it via a smart contract? It doesn't make it more efficient. It doesn't make it less bureaucratic. It doesn't make it, it doesn't make the process of buying a house easier, simpler, more productive. You still have all these things like centralized entities like banks and governments that are, have to enforce rules and laws and titles of the household. Like there's a lot of stuff that goes into owning a property. So the only benefit from a blockchain perspective is if it's on the blockchain, it's a public record of it. I don't know why that necessarily matters that much. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying like right now you go to you go to Bank of America or wherever else. In this case, you might tap into a, a you know wider pool of, of borrowers who are lenders. In this case, get a lower cost of capital, not negotiate with the same bank, and be able. Why would I get a lower cost of capital from a random person versus a massive bank like Wells Fargo? Well, you wouldn't. I mean, it'd be from a pool of people. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so already right there, right? That was one of the first competitive uh, differentiations, which is like, well, you, the cost of borrowing capital uh, will be lower to buy the house. And then Zach's like, why? And the guy's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's just like, like so in, in the crypto world, you get it done through a collective community versus like a centralized entity, which is a bank. But you start to realize, wait a second, like why would a community give me a lower rate than a centralized entity that has a lot more power than that community and a lot more money and resources and a lot more assurances that like i actually get the money and the deal gets like doesn't doesn't really add up <laughs> it's like it's just it doesn't it doesn't work like but I, I don't think it doesn't i'm all for like the technology is cool but like you, there's no as you work the idea through the minute you put an on real asset on chain you realize oh right like the only reason I can borrow against these real assets is because there is a document that the U.S. court system will enforce. There's a document in this case, too, here, and there's no reason that the U.S. court system wouldn't enforce it. It's a smart contract as opposed to, like, a ream of papers or an online document. But then what makes it smart? The whole point of a smart... That's a good question here. So Pacquiao has a good response. He's like, wait a second, like, whether it's a smart contract or a bunch of papers, the U.S. court system can enforce it. It is a legal thing. And in Zach's argument is like, well, why is it smart then? <laughs> what makes it more efficient or productive or like reasonable for us to do it this way versus the traditional way? Contract is that the computer can do everything. And here what you're saying is I've got to now take this contract to the U.S. court system. I have to prove that I own it. I need the sheriff to then show up and get me out. You've just recreated the entire mortgage infrastructure that already exists today. On the blockchain. But that exactly, right. it's it's like when he said that. When I heard this last night, bro. When I when he when his rebuttal was on the blockchain, I lost it, bro. I was just like, what? Like that's and granted, maybe he wasn't feeling the best for this podcast. I understand. I'm very sympathetic to that. But man, you gotta have a better response if you're gonna argue for this. And this is what makes me skeptical to buy stocks like Coinbase. It's like you hear these things. And again, I, I started this video by saying not cri cri all of crypto is in a scam. I, I obviously believe that. I think there's use cases for crypto. But you start to realize, well, like, is this just hype when people are saying all this stuff? Is it like when you, when you look at the actual use case, like, well, what can I do with this? Is it literally just an asset I'm buying to sell more in the future? Because you can say, well, that's the same with stocks. That's not the same with stocks. In stocks, you're buying cash flows of a company. And when those cash flows increase, hopefully the share price increases. And then you can appreciate, you can sell the share price because... Uh, you are selling them for a higher price than you bought them for because the value of the company increased because the va the company actually did something. And if the value of the company artificially increases like GameStop or AMC, then you're gambling. And maybe you're right, but a lot of times you could be wrong. And so with here, I don't really get the use case at all. And then I'm, I'm lost as to like why the on the blockchain part matters besides basically what everyone means is they mean, oh, I want a public record of the transaction. Okay, right? Like, sure, that's that's the thing you're looking for. But ultimately, every other step in the process is essentially the exact same thing you have to do in the real world. Yeah, I mean, and, and uh, I got wrecked on the, the mortgage example because I've never thought through that one before. Yeah, to me, it's not a question of thinking it through. To me, it's a question of just like, you. those four minutes were enough to think it through. There's not a better rebuttal. There's not a better response to the argument that you have to recreate the entire mortgage infrastructure in a cryptographic way 
in order for it to make sense, which denies the value of it being useful or productive or efficient because just because it's cryptographic or public doesn't mean it has done anything important. So I wanted to bring that to your attention just because I thought this was incredibly interesting to analyze. I want to know what people think in the comments, how you think about Web3 technologies and use cases. There are use cases. It's not totally garbage or anything like that. But situations like this, you realize, well, what can I do this for other than buying a picture of a digital art collectible, which is great. I think that's awesome for creativity and there's opens up a market for artists and people to monetize their content. But like other real world use cases, it's hard to, to come around this stuff. So let me know what you guys think. If you own Coinbase or cryptocurrencies or different stocks, how do you respond to that type of use case? Does that you know make you a little worried about it? Or do you like, ah, that's not the best argument. There's a better example. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Looking forward to looking at them and I'll see you in the next one.